Oz here, and Erica asked me a question about my recent video about using the intersection command. I put together a lot of things in there. I used substitute, I made named ranges, a lot of things happening in that video. So I'm gonna clarify a couple of things for her. And please, if you have other questions, let me know. Your clean data and end in unnecessary misery is what's important to me. Okay, so let's get on with the get on. So we have over here this data. So East is broken down into three pieces. Southeast has four pieces. Fort Grand has two pieces. And here are some requests. So E2 wants 31 boxes. Southeast three wants seven tens. And I wanted to dig out just the totals, the East, the Southeast, the Fort Grand over here. How many total cartons does East want? How many total tens does Fort Grand want? That's all I cared about. So I created named ranges. So I highlight this entire section. go up to formulas create from sex selection so it's going to create a named range from the top row okay which is jar bottle through 10 left column from e1 down okay now we can go over here and see these are the named ranges that were created and let's look at Fort Grand. Once I click this for Fort Grand, it takes me to and highlights the Fort Grand range. I want an intersection that says Fort Grand bottle. Bottle. Fort Grand. I need the number 14. Okay. But there is an issue. If you notice, Fort Grand has an underscore. Excel put that underscore in the name of the range. So I've got to respect that if I'm going to have my formulas work properly. So I'm going to unhide this column where I put in a formula, a substitute formula that will find a space and replace it with an underscore so that I can talk to Excel in a way that it understands because it's not going to find a named range with fort space. So in order to use the intersection, do equals indirect. And I'm putting my cursor on B5, not A5. And space indirect bag, close parentheses, 20. So does East want 20 total bags? Yes. East wants 20 total bags. And notice what the named range does for us as well. These headers are not in the same order. We've got jar, bottle, box. Over here, bag, bottle, box. So by using the named range, we don't have to try to count columns, you know, or try to rearrange things so that they line up right. No, we can tell the formula to look for the named range bag, no matter where it is in this range. We have to do our absolute and relative cell references. So when I drag this formula, 
to the right and down, we want the header to stay the same as we go across and we want these headers to stay the same. So that means for C4, which is here, C4, we want the formula to go from bag, bottle, box, etc. So we will put a dollar sign in row four. And we want the B column to stay put when we move this. So we'll put a dollar sign in front of the B. Now, let's drag this down. Okay. And let's drag this across. Now let's see. Does Southeast want 56 tens? Yes. Southeast wants 56 tens. So we have the information we want. So why do we use indirect? Indirect says take literally what I have in the cell. So if I were to say equals B5 space for intersect and C4, Excel does see those cells, but it doesn't know what I'm asking for. So I need to prompt it and I'm going to use indirect so that it says literally the intersection of east and bag and it's looking for those named ranges and it'll only do that if I wrap it in intersect. So hopefully that gives you a little better insight into what was happening in the previous video. And let me know if there are questions.